first being on the, the self-driving car project and um, you know, having a small group of engineers and talking about taking this to the public road, there was a lot of inconsistency and in thoughts about you know, why we would take it to the public road. Why would we even bother thinking about taking it out of a testing environment? Because nobody had. And uh, we felt that it was more important to get the learning cycles of being on public roads and protecting by having a rigorous program that you know, required you know, two engineers to be constantly in the vehicle's driver and passenger seat, um, that required um, a constant remote um, visualization of where the vehicles were. We, we safeguarded for this approach, but it was really, I think, kind of very, very necessary to be able to test on public roads, um, both in terms of building conscientiousness in the public and building um, conscientiousness in the regulatory environment and also helping us get the learning cycles. Um, so that was an example where we felt that there was a risk. We felt that this, this program could fail, um, but we needed to, to fail fast if that was the case. And we took the risk, and it ended up being one of, the, I think, the most important projects um, of our generation, um, if not the century. Um, there were other examples where you know, we've been, I've been in, 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 in process of developing a search engine that was um, slightly more avant-garde than what Google Search is doing. It was doing social search, and um, it failed. Um, and um, you know, we ran out of money, uh, but at the same time, Google saw from an article that I had written in the MIT Technology Review about the importance of you know, your friend's um, influence on your decisions being more important than objective influences on decisions. This is called a referral mechanism, which ended up being hugely valuable to Google Search, and they actually bought our company based on that whole technology and criteria. So even if we failed in the domain of not being able to have a company succeed on its own, we were hugely successful in having that group of engineers be transported over to Google and run Android and improve search quality and do a lot of other really enterprising things in the last two years um, for the mobility platform. So again, you know, failing fast is something um, that is, you know, you can't measure that but you can provide sustenance to your development path, both engineering and product development, if you're able to assume that risk early on in the project. Kim, do you have an example of a fast failure? Or? Um, yeah, uh, so I, I'd say um, it's 2004, 2005, I had a senior fellow, so our top engineers come to me, I was at EDS then, and explained to me this thing called cloud computing and that we should change our business model um, around cloud computing. And I thought, thought I knew more than he did and I said, that's the dumbest idea I've ever heard. <laughs> we actually already have that in the mainframe and here's why, here's how this works. And I didn't listen well enough to what he was saying to pick up the nuance on what, so you know, three years go by and lo and behold cloud computing is the, you know, the next greatest thing. And, um, <clears throat> but the, the problem with not listening in that environment is that we didn't change our business model and we ended up being um, bought because we couldn't afford to not be bought, right? We couldn't, we, we, our expenses, capital markets had shut down, our expenses were growing, we had to be bought. And um, that's what you learn in technology is that every generation of technology um, causes a rethinking of your business model. And if you're not willing to ride that curve, then you risk obsolescence. And so that was, that was really powerful, I think.